The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I am back, comfortably zoned with the token Jew, with an I. I'm in Alameda, California, and uh, right across the bay from San Francisco, across the moat from Oakland, and um, I've got a good gig. I get to talk to the most interesting people on the face of the planet, And tonight's no exception. We're going to talk Hall of Fame with the Rose Brothers and maybe Robert Cole. The Rose Brothers are here. Marty, how are you? I'm good, Ralph. I'm good. Very good. How are you doing tonight? I can't complain. Everything is uh, hokey-dory except that every day, this has been an exception, but we lose an icon. It's it's just um, yeah, this it's year, this year's been terrible. This year's been terrible, and um, I don't see an end to it because of impending mortality um, coming in. That could be very depressing. But uh, let's introduce your brother, Marty. Your brother is Bernie. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I nicknamed you guys Mert and Barn. Marty Rose, I think I was the first, I would almost swear to it, that I was the first to nickname you that. And uh, it's caught on a bit. Um, I know the Hall of Fame is... uh, Asking for Mert and Bond to to, <laughs> to to give their analysis of how they screwed it up, and not just this year, but um, I think the Hall of Fame is hurting. And um, I'll tell you, Marty and I think it's hurting for the wrong reasons. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, but Bernie Rose, welcome. How about that? Thank you very much. Glad to be oh. here with you guys. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Um, uh, let me start out by saying, uh, by calling attention to our great debate. We never really talk about it, but we see each other's postings on Facebook And uh, the big question is, uh, should Bonds, Clemens, and the rest of them be put into the Hall of Fame? I say yes. It's um, with the idea that um, they played in an era where the culture of baseball was steroids. 80%, and and these are wild estimates, but not all that wild. Uh, I've spoken to to a lot of ballplayers, ex-ballplayers, and um, they agree with me. It it wasn't just the pitchers that Clemens competed with, and it wasn't just the batters that Bonds competed with. If Bonds was facing a pitcher... He chances are they were he was roided up, and if Clemens was facing a batter, chances are the batter was was roided up. Um, so were they cheating? Was the garbage can cheating? Was Bobby Thompson's home run that w- was spied? The sign was stolen by a telescope. In 1951, it, um, my contention is it the the game itself reflects society. It isn't perfect, but everybody is looking for an angle. And I do know that Willie had his 
speed mixed in with willy juice to get him through the hot summer's day days and um everybody is looking for the angle now uh, instead of letting me start with marty let me start with bernie and and see if i'm on the right track okay well i'm with you 100 percent. absolutely these guys deserve to be in the whole thing is is, is upside down it, it, it's a power trip these not only are the writers hypocritical it's a power trip we're going to keep these guys out because we can keep them out you know and and it doesn't matter that they're all off on the wrong track because everything that you just said is absolutely true and and if i might add you know these you know obviously not the same writers because it was a lot of different writers years ago that put in gaylord perry when he was throwing spitballs, everybody knew that was an illegal pitch he was throwing. They didn't stop him from giving him two Cy Young Awards, one in each league, and putting him in the Hall of Fame. It didn't stop them from putting Ty Cobb, uh, a man reputed to be, and as far as everything that I've ever heard or read about, was a, a massive racist in the Hall of Fame. Now, if those guys can be in, and if I could just throw one bit more in there, that just occurred to me. What, I don't know how far back all this goes. With the, when when cocaine actually used to be in coke, you know. But there right. were in the early 1900s when cocaine was actually in Coca Cola, and baseball players actually advertised it. When I need a lift in the eighth, seventh, or eighth inning, I have a coke. Now, I don't well, know how many of those me, guys are in the Hall of Fame. Let me just say one thing, Bert. Uh, Bernie, um, Coke is as a, it's an illegal drug, but you can't compare it with steroids. No, you can't. No, no, absolutely not. But I'm just trying to show the hypocrisy. Oh, uh, absolutely. And, and frankly, uh, you know, I have no problem and with putting cocaine. Ortiz in, <laughs> putting Ortiz in, and leaving Bonds and Clemens out were, was absolutely ridiculous because. If you're going to go by, leave him out because of uh, steroids, Ortiz is on the, on the Mitchell report. He was caught. And that one invalidates the selection process, if anything does. Marty. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys just covered it pretty well. Um, I, I, I agree with you that these guys were all doing it. I mean, not all, but I mean, during, during their time, like you said, it was widespread. Everybody, everybody was doing it or a large amount of people were doing it. But, you know, since they added that, um, they added a couple of, uh, lines to the, the uh no but no pun intended <laughs> no 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 <laughs> no pun intended they added a couple of uh, of of uh paragraphs let's say to the to to uh the way you need what what you can do to get into the hall of fame and they and they added words like character integrity and sportsmanship so that, that, that in itself, like uh, Bond mentioned, Ty Cobb, yeah. that refutes it all. He was an original. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was like a founding father. He was one of the the thirteen, fourteen guys who were chosen originally, and so. But they only the, added that. In the, they only added those those line words in the seventies, I think. That was not a yeah right right. Yeah. I don't know if that's when it was, but you're right. Yeah, in the 1970s, they added character, integrity, and sportsmanship as as part of the the deal to get in, along with all the statistics the guy amasses in his career. Yeah, so but that's a bunch of BS. It's, it's a know. bunch of BS, but it gave the writers something to think about, and I that's a good way that they used it right here to keep these guys out. 
You know, yeah, and then you said the, the same writers that knew, along with Bud Selig, that what McGuire and Sosa were doing was tainted. And no, everybody in baseball knew. And the writers had to know. I know, uh, for instance, that Piazza's back mm-hmm. looks like moon craters. Mm-hmm. And... um I don't know that personally, but I was uh, given an interview by someone, and it's in the archives. Um, uh, Michael Doza, uh, who is um, uh, an official scorer, and he he's known him for years. He's a user. He is allegedly a user and in. And um, it's hypocritical. That's it. You know, the hypocrisy runs rampant. That's all. No I can doubt. Say. And 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 I pointed out to you in, in one of the posts, uh, you guys, uh, you know, about uh, I lost my train of thought for a second. But uh, the way the way this whole thing is is just it's a power trip. It's just a total. These guys know what's going on. They know the score. They know these guys belong in, and they just won't do it because they can do it. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of them aren't, don't see both sides. They think, well, the guy's a cheater, and I'm not saying they're not a cheater, but there's a side that I talked about before, everybody in society is looking for an angle. And um, can you blame a guy who um, would turn, if he weren't doing it, would turn down $15 million? And that's a year. (laughs) That's not in the lifetime. That's more than Marty and I ever made. Really? Um, <laughs> um, as as an example, now I want to bring up one thing to further show you the hypocrisy of it all. Ten years ago, Sports Illustrated came out with an article who that interviewed nine or ten players who were what they call bubble players on the bubble. And these guys talked about competing. This was after the Mitchell report came out. And these guys talked about competing with guys who were doing steroids. They weren't, refused to give in, and got beaten out for a job by guys looking to hang on and how about the, how about the guys that never got to the major leagues because of it just thought I'd throw that in yeah um, yeah and, and what I was going to say was you know that Mitchell report is a popularity contest too because a guy on a Mitchell report or big poppy if you will you know uh, you know whether there was some illegitimacy to that report or not but everybody loves Big Poppy. So he gets voted right. in, what, on his first try, was it? Yep. And come on. But everybody loves him. But if I may say, and I never really got it, you know, because I, I don't know him personally, but there was never any love for Barry. Never. No. I mean, I. No. And it he, seems and he like a nice that, guy to me. He brought but, that on. No, he's. Uh, uh, I understand what you're going to per- say, but his nobody likes him. His personality is mercur- mercurial. It goes up and down. And yeah, I think I know. that was, I know. That I was heard part about of the steroids. Yeah. That's the oh, way maybe. steroids uh, affects people. Yeah, uh, that's true. Part, that's true. Um, drastic mood changes. It's all part of it. But yep. um, I can tell you just from watching him those five years when he couldn't, he wouldn't take 
a strikeout. He wouldn't strike out. I mean, this guy had Ted they Williams. They couldn't strike him out. <laughs> right. And um, he was just absolutely unbelievable. Um, it, it was just, what can you say? Now, you can say he did steroids, but if a lot of people did steroids, exactly. he was ab absolutely at the top of his game. You exactly. Could, well, he was a great player uh, before he ever took a steroid. Exactly. Good point, or, and good he just, point. Yeah, and he just, you know, when he started taking them, he went from a great player to, like, out of the out of the stratosphere. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Untouchable. Forget about it. Gone goodbye. I mean, nobody close. So, you know, unbelievable, really. And who's to say he wouldn't have done it anyway? I mean, you know, he and and, and he may not have, but not a, that Ed age Williams was... could do it. He didn't have steroids, so why couldn't somebody else do it? Is all I'm saying. I mean, well, with not... with, Bar with Barry, there were a number of tales. Ted Williams' head didn't grow. No, I understand maybe... all that. I'm just trying to make, you know, and then uh, I'm just looking at. Ted Williams and Barry's, uh, he, he broke a lot of those records, or he was he was replicating a lot of what Ted Williams did. And right. like you said, he was doing it against people that were also, you know, juiced up or what have you. Uh, I, I'm just trying to make a parallel. I'm not, yeah. I understand all that, what you're trying to say, but it's just ridiculous to keep him out. Yeah. It's something yeah. That, uh, that I've heard brought up was that, you know, him and Clemens, they reached an age where he's supposed to be declining. Yeah. Everybody is declining at age 39 and 40 or whatever, you know. But these guys got better and jacked their numbers into the stratosphere just because of the one thing. Well, Tom Brady yeah. threw more for more yardage in his 40s than he did in his 20s, and everybody loves him for it. And wouldn't it be something if he were doing steroids? It's not like he has some... It, well, he's it's deflating, not like, deflating footballs, and they right, still love Exactly, him. exactly. He's, um, and, uh, you know, there was another thing with the films and, and what have you in New England. They were illegally filming something. It, again, the, the uh, it's a reflection of society and that get ahead at any cost. Um, <laughs> but Jeez, don't get I, caught. That's all, yeah. I, I want to say one more thing be, uh, about Clemens and Bonds. Bonds, like Bernie said, had the Hall of Fame clinched. He was a great player before he ever met the needle in the buttocks. Yeah, Bert said it. Bert said it. Uh, right. Um, Clemens had most of his success, his real success, and I'm not taking anything away from Cy Young Awards, uh, seven, how about, how about that? But most of his success came after he was allegedly juicing. So um, you can't compare apples to apples there, but uh, how about guys like Palermo, um, they should be let in. Um, yeah, he had one season of 50 home runs. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about him, but I don't know. No, what about A Rod? 2000 A -Rod hits. Uh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. He, he, he only got, was this his first year of eligibility? Yes. Oh, you know, he got 34.3%. Right. So he'll probably get higher as the years go along, but they may keep him out too. Uh, I'm sure nine, they will. Nine, nine more years. I don't know. But if Ortiz gets in first-year eligibility and he played in the exact same era as uh, A-Rod, <laughs> calling him A-Rod, um, A-Roy, they used to call him. Yeah. But notwithstanding that, uh, he was a great player. I mean, as good a shortstop as anyone 
who ever lived in my Oh, in my absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, All right, granted, um, maybe he doesn't hit 58 home runs if he's not roided up, but he still, as you both have pointed out, he was a Hall of Famer way before that happened. And what did he do it for, one to three years? You can't take away the rest of his career, but they will. You see, that's the thing. Right. The players right. should vote. The players should vote. You want to let the writers vote also? Fine. Let the players vote. Let the ex-players vote. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's just amazing to me. They'll put they'll put their own people in, you know, or the owners. They'll put forth, you know, the the the, the commissioner who used to own Milwaukee, but but then no, I'll give it up. Let my daughter run. Like I really has nothing to do with the team, so he could be commissioner, you know. And, and they'll put him in. Come on, he knew everything that was going on. Gee, absolutely, absolutely. And they loved uh, it. And the press loved it. They loved Sosa and McGuire banging out who's going to break the record. They loved it. The public loved it. So why punish these guys now? Well, why? Because of the disillusionment. I, I'm playing both uh, both ends against the middle. Um, I can remember my kid was five. And... Uh, Bonds and or uh, Sosa and McGuire were going at it, and I can remember trying to put him in front of the television. How much he absorbed um, it was another thing at age five. But my early memories of of baseball was at age five. Now he got to watch something that turns out to be totally bogus. <laughs> yeah. Um, that and one more thing. You guys have both read my book. One of the chapters in my book is about a woman who, uh, whose son, I uh, can't think of his first name, but he's Bob Garibaldi's nephew. And he died, this kid died of steroids, steroid abuse. Um, and how much, how many high school kids yep. took took to steroids because of the example that the big leaguers were setting? And I know that the classic answer to that is don't, if you're a ball player, don't make me the father figure. Right, right. It's it's not my fault that your kid did it, but in its in a way it is. So there's so much complexity to it all, but um, we've covered it. Now let me ask you guys individually, which what can be done to save the Hall of Fame? <laughs> Go ahead, Mert. <laughs> Just as yeah, you know, there are no right or wrong answers. Um, um, what would you suggest? Gonna, it's never going to change. I mean, this is the way it's going to remain. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just not going to change unless unless they drop the uh, ten year thing. Um, you know, you can only be eligible for for ten years. And you got to have a certain amount. What is it? Over five percent. You have. If you get under five percent, you dropped immediately. But yeah. maybe they just got to let, got to let the uh, drop the ten year uh, limit on the voting. Or let, let or go. let the old timers committee take care of it. Well, I mean, yeah, but how often? Is, gonna, yeah, well, they don't but, always. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I mean, right. Uh, I don't know how long these guys got to wait to be eligible for that. The, and when did uh, they drop it from 15? Didn't it used to be 15? Now it's 10? Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't remember it being 15, Burn. Really? I thought it was. But whatever. But, yeah, I mean, the old-timers committee, they put guys in, and and sometimes they don't. 
I mean, I never thought they were going to put Gil Hodges in, but they... Well, they put a bunch of guys in this year. Yeah. Four or five, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's about time. I know. But, jeez. You know, it makes well, you wonder. Let me ask you guys yeah. about one other, another guy that we didn't mention, and it's not steroids. It's Kurt Schilling. Okay? Mm. Kurt Schilling... Um, won 216 games, and he had a 3.46 earned run average. And, you know, he w- he was very good. He was very had good. Had some postseason heroics. Right. He was good, right. but he had some very good postseason, at least three years, if you know, and, and that's a lot in this day and age because it's hard to get to the postseason. But I never thought he had Hall stats. 216 oh. wins gets you in the hall now? Well, it used to be 300. Yeah, but... Now, granted, guy, it's different. I know it's different. Much different now. I mean, yeah. I, look at Jacob DeGrom. He, he may never win even 100 games in his whole life, you know? <laughs> uh, but he's one of the greatest pitchers I've ever seen, you know? Yeah, right, but if it only ends up being for three years, I you know, know, I mean, I don't know how many years has it been. But Sandy... Uh, Really, only had five great years or six great years. So, total you know, you got to total dominance. What's that? Total dominance. Oh yeah, yeah. No, Degrom's been great, hmm. but he's, he's got to do it for a longer period of time. But yeah, no, the game has totally changed now. It's even changed more than from twenty years ago when it was already changed. So, uh, yeah, that's well. Schilling, Schilling seems to think that his right wing views are keeping him out. That well, I hope it know. does. <laughs> <laughs> that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to bring politics into it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Let's 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 not do that. That's okay. beautiful. But but besides the perfect, that, yeah. the perfect response, Vaughn. There you go. <laughs> I mean, well, he he's not just right wing. Jim Bunning was right wing. This guy is nuts. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, he is. He is. Um, yeah, I know. So, uh, but that's very good. Very good. <laughs> All right. I uh, remember. Yeah, but, yeah, what? What? What do you got? I just want to know how it can be saved. I'm looking at, at um, I'm looking at it's got to be. I mean, that's it's an institution. Can they turn their bad practices around? Or you know, they keep keep putting guys has in so much. You know, when I was a kid, maybe because you know we grew up in New York City. You know, I don't know, and and. Most of this country doesn't even know where Cooperstown is, probably. But, uh, and we were growing up in the baseball era, you know, and and for a little while anyway, uh, you know, we had three teams in New York City. I mean, it was a baseball mecca. It was the baseball era, and 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 the Hall of Fame just seemed like all I ever wanted to do was go to the Hall of Fame. And frankly, when I finally got there, I was in like my late thirties or something, and uh, I was disappointed, <laughs> frankly. But uh, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, but around the country, does anybody care about the Baseball Hall of Fame anymore? Yeah, just they, um... well, they show up for induction day. You know, it's always crowded there for induction day. I was there and for that's, the Willie that's Mays another thing. Some yeah. of the some of the older players put it on record that if Bonds and Clemens makes it, they won't show up. Mm-hmm. This was four or five years ago. I don't know how many of them are left, and I don't know if they've mellowed in their opinions um, or their. Mm-hmm thoughts on it but um yeah, i remember hearing that yeah yeah well that's, that's another yeah good mm. go ahead Vern. 
Well, I mean, that is unfortunate. I, 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 I have a slight recollection of that. But uh, they they can't let that be, you know, the leverage uh, to keep them out. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you don't want to lose touch with your old greats. That's for sure. But unfortunately, you know, it, the, the I don't know. There's so much bad information. There's so much misinformation or there's just so much bias one way or the other, you know, that, you know, I would hope that that wouldn't be the reason to keep them out. Well, didn't a lot of these guys take greenies too? Oh, yes. yeah, I'm sure they did. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, Good that, point. That, that's, that's illegal now. I mean, uh, uh, they, they they took those things, the caffeine pills or whatever the hell they were. And, um, you know, that, that, that's not legal anymore. And they, that was widespread, no question. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. Uh, that's why I think they somehow, some way, somebody has to step up, and I don't know who's going to do that, and, and say, you know, we got to mellow out and put an end to this nonsense. You know, and if a guy has the stats, you know, get rid of that other stupid, you know, uh, Arab, those Arab rules that they, in sports. right get rid of it <laughs> somebody's mm. got to step up these guys belong in the hall let me ask you guys this Pete Rose <laughs> well Jeff. Shoeless Joe Jeff. is ineligible Absolutely. Pete, Rose, Pete Rose is in, ineligible well change it well that's you know whenever he did he was a manager He's never going to go in as a manager. He's going in as a player. You know, I, I mean, and I and I wonder if if Bart Giamatti didn't die, mm -hmm. would all this? I mean, you know, I, I it, and it's a terrible thing that Bart Giamatti died of a heart attack, but he may have anyway. Now, granted, he was under a lot of stress. I remember that that was a huge thing, but. Really, Pete Rose belongs in the Hall of Fame, and nobody likes Pete Rose. <laughs> well, but he happened to have the greatest number of hits of anyone who ever lived. Exactly. Now, um, exactly. How can you, if you're going to deny him, how can you justify that? Um, so take morals out of it. Well, yeah, it, the, the football doesn't have that. I don't know. I don't think any of the other ones have that. It's just, are you a great player? You're an all fame. I mean, if Ty Cobb were you can talking be to there. Me? Were you talking to me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, had a, I had a delusion there for a second. I, where am I? <laughs> yeah, there you go. But... Um, I mean, I, you yeah. know, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 the guys belong. It, it, it's just wrong. And and if you want to do a, have a healing, have a, you know, put an asterisk if you have to. But that's the that's something else I was going to suggest. That's a great idea, Barn. Just. It, with everybody in the era, these players were playing in an era when there's a good chance, blah, 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 word it in a, in a legal way, that um, they were helped or whatever. But the asterisk is is a great idea. Yeah. And and then, um, yeah, that would solve a lot, a lot of it. Uh, there is, though... A sign in every major league clubhouse that says no betting whatsoever, and they state the penalties. So when yeah. some of this has to be put on the shoulders of Pete Rose, and we're a forgiving country, had he copped to it originally? And said, "Look, I've got a problem." Um, yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. 
um, it would have been, he easily would have been in at this point. And I know he signed a paper. He signed a paper. So that means he said, all right, I'm never going in. But they also left a little, they left the door open a little bit, said he could reapply, but, you know, they didn't mean it and they're never going to do it. But on that question, what about Paul Horning? Didn't he get caught in a betting thing? He's in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely, with Alex Karras. And how did they uh, uh, reward Alex Karras? They made him a celebrity for life. He right. played in a whole, a whole bunch of things. He was a big gambler. And how about the sports announcers like Michaels, for instance, who knows the over-under in every game, <laughs> who always manages to get it in there. <laughs> um <laughs> Listen, um, I can't even think of his name. He was a giant announcer at one time. Michaels. Uh, Oh. Al Michaels. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, the hypocrisy of life is crazy. Uh, We got a half an hour to not think about the misery of it all. We didn't think about mortality. We didn't think of Russia. We didn't think of Germany not supporting NATO because they're going to get the gas, and we we did not support them. But um, we didn't think about that once, and we didn't bring too much politics into it, so it was a great show. (laughs) (laughs) No, we didn't bring too much in there. But just enough, Fern. <laughs> one question yeah. about one question about Pete Rose, though. Can you swear okay. to me that he never bet against his team? Oh no, he, that that came out, and people don't realize that that's as bad as betting for your team, because it tells the bookies what what how much expectation he has of winning. And you're absolutely right. Um, Well, you are. But, I mean, if I – here's a funny situation. If I had to bet on it, (laughs) (laughs) I would bet no. Because this all he ever was about was winning. I can't even imagine him betting on his team to lose. But then again – when you're addicted he like bet, that. No, he never bet on his team to lose. But he just won bet on certain days when he obviously expected the odds to be in, not to be in his favor. Right. He knows who's, who's hurting, who can't right, edge, right. stuff like that. So, yeah, really. Right. No, I, no, the whole thing's a damn shame. But, yeah. I mean, just as a player, you know, he belongs in. But... You know what are you going to do? And then, okay. and then, you know, with a couple of you know messages we had going back and forth on that line, on on the internet, and then Stan, you know, our old buddy Stan Weiss, he he brought up Shoeless Joe. You know, I mean, geez. Yeah, good point. How's Stanley doing, Jackson Heights boy? Good. Yeah. Yeah, as far as we yeah. know, he's very he's well. Made. Yeah. For years, yeah. He- Good. Yeah. He won a lot of money playing poker, you know. Oh yeah. yeah well, I watched that. Uh, I watched that. That was great. <laughs> oh, you it's watched amazing. it on television? <laughs> I saw him win that one point. What was it? Three million on the World Poker Tour. I watched it. It was great. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It's amazing too, because there were, he made two moves that he he really got. He got lucky. He made two moves and then lucked out. I I thought he was done, but it worked out in his favor. And then, and then he kept he kept on winning. It it was it was great. It was great to watch him win. Well, Stanley would say it keeps him from working. (laughs) Well, nobody should be working at this point. Oh, absolutely. And uh, this point being our lifetime. Um, Unless you love, you know, doing what you're doing, like podcasting, you know. 
<laughs> right. Right. Um, well, playing music. Point. Yes. It, well, loving life with his ladies. How about that, Mert? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. All good. Absolutely. All right. Let's pray for immortality and um, <laughs> let's do this more often. We missed Robert Cole, Cole tonight, but we'll yeah. catch up with him another time. And um, thank you, guys. It's a, um, We had some real good laughs. And I think we, um, if you listen back on this, this thing, we put it into, into perspective. And um, it's all you can do. Yep. And yep. it's cathartic yep. getting it out there. So um, Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, I'm Ralph Tycho. My guests are the Rose Brothers, Marty and Mert. Marty and Mert. That was good. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> Marty and Bond. You know, I've only got had 67 years to get used to you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, that's it. Love you guys. Be well. Right. Thank you for listening, everybody. It was fun. Believe Back me. at you. Thanks. All right. Good night. Adios. Bye. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.